Hi, my name is Seti, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take your phone and mirror it to your computer, as well as control it from your computer, which then allows you to record the screen, do live demos, etc. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll need to prepare your phone. And then secondly, you'll have to download a file. Now, in order to prepare your phone, you're going to have to turn on the developer options, developer mode. So let's go ahead and jump onto our Android phone and do just that. Now here I'm on my Android phone. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my settings. I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to scroll all the way down. Now here you can see I already have developer options turned on. However, if you do not see that, you're going to go to your about page. Here we are going to find the build number. If you don't see it here because you have a different model, what you can do is find the software information. Here you are looking for the build number. You're going to tap this a number of times and then it will automatically activate developer mode. Now I can't do this anymore. You can see it says no need, it's already enabled. Once you have that enabled, go ahead and find your developer mode and go in. Now in your developer mode, the main thing you will want activated is your USB debugging. And that's because we are going to connect our phone with a USB cable to our PC in order to make this work. Now there is a way of doing this over Wi-Fi. However, the USB cable is the best and most efficient way of doing this. It's faster, more reliable, and there's less lag. Now once you've activated all of this, it's time for you to go back to your computer. Now the phone is ready. Now as you connect your phone to your computer, you might get a little notification asking you if you want to activate USB debugging. Now on some phones, there's also various modes. So you can see here, as I drag down, I have different modes in my Android system. At the moment, it is set to USB tethering. That's what you want. If it's set to transferring files or transferring images, make sure that you change that in your USB settings. And not all phones will do this. Once you've done that, let's go on to the computer now. Now on the computer, you are going to find a piece of software called Screen Copy. S-C-R-C-P-Y. Now when you type that into Google, Screen Copy, what you'll find is the first link is going to be a GitHub page. Go ahead and open up the GitHub page. This is also where you will always find the most up-to-date, most recent version of this open source software. Now don't worry, you don't have to install anything. You're just going to scroll down to where you can find Start Using It. Here we go, get the app. You're going to download the relevant file. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on Windows. And this then automatically gives me the 64-bit or 32-bit version. I'm going to get the 64-bit version and download that file. Again, you're not going to have to install anything. This open source software is going to run whenever you need it. So we're going to open up this file and then extract this to a location. I've already done this. I've extracted it to my desktop. And these are the files you will find inside this file. This is what you will use now to activate that link, that connection between the two. So what you're going to look for is you're going to look for screen copy no console dot vbs. You're going to click on this. You'll get a notification on your device. Go ahead and accept that. And now you have access to your screen. You can see I can scroll on my phone or I can do it with the computer mouse right here on my phone. Now, in addition to having a full screen experience of what goes on on your phone, you have a number of additional options. Now, Screen Copy has many hidden options and you can access those through a terminal. So go back to those files and go ahead where it says open a terminal here. We're going to double click on that and this will open up the command prompt or terminal. Here we can now ask for all the available commands. So we're going to type screen copy and then hyphen hyphen help. 
Now this will give us an overview of everything available. So you can see these are all the different commands we can use. You can see here we can use hyphen R to record a file. I'll show you that in a minute. But we can do many more things. You can see we can set the maximum frames per second. We can set various settings. We can have different audio encoders. If you like to dive into the settings of different programs, this is where you'll find all the instructions and how to do that. Scrolling down, you will also find that there are different shortcuts. So here, for example, the shortcuts that are set up. Here we have um, Mod plus F, that means full screen. Now on my computer, that is the Alt key. So Alt F will automatically do it full screen. I can do Alt Right, which will rotate the display. All these shortcuts are set up by default. You can see them here in the terminal. Now let's go ahead and record a little video file from my phone and then have access to it on my computer without the need for screen recording and then transferring files or emailing them to yourself or uploading them to cloud storage. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to scroll down to the terminal and we're going to start typing. I'm going to type screen copy space and then hyphen R. That's what we saw for the record statements. We're now going to add a space. And the next step is to give our file a file name. I'm going to call this demo recording dot mp4. Now you can use mp4 files and you can use mkv files. I'm going to stick to mp4 for this. I'm going to press enter. It'll automatically start running and there we go. It opens up that screen. Now it is recording my screen. So I can just scroll through this, then go back to the home page. And now when I close this screen, it will automatically tell me recording completed. You can find it under demo recording.mp4. Now, where did it put that file? Well, it's put it in the same folder where all those other files are. So let's go ahead and open up that folder. And you will see here we have our mp4 file in that folder automatically put there and easy to use for any type of video work you may have or demos that you want to send to colleagues. Now this is how you can do it over USB cable. Now, If you wanted to do this over Wi-Fi then you would have to make sure that you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Again you're going to jump into that terminal and you're going to look at the help files because the one that you are going to use for the Wi-Fi connection is you're going to use TCP IP. So you're going to ask screen copy for the TCP IP address. You're going to get that address, unplug that cable, and then run that same command again, and you'll be good to go connect it over Wi-Fi. So let's have a look at that. We're going to type screen copy, hyphen hyphen TCP IP. It's going to run, there we go. Now, once you've run this TCP IP, and you've accepted the notification on your phone, you can now unplug that cable and then run it one more time. I'm going to press the up key, which is going to run script copy space hyphen hyphen TCIP, enter. And there we go. I'm now controlling this over Wi-Fi. So you can see as I scroll up, this is now visible on my computer screen as well. So we are now on the same Wi-Fi network. And that is key. You do not have to be on the same internet if you are connecting through the USB cable. If you want to use the Wi-Fi connection, then you have to be on the exact same Wi-Fi network. This is script copy. I'll leave all the links in the description below. I hope this was helpful. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.